pay everybody to Adam Tracy. And it's one thing to get a bank license, but if people can't get their money out or freely access their money, there's really no point. And that's where debit cards come into play. And the question I get a lot is how do you become an issuer for a card organization like Visa, MasterCard, et cetera, et cetera. And the truth of the matter is if you are a licensed bank, the second you obtain the license, Visa, MasterCard, et cetera, get noticed that you are in fact licensed and they'll like walk in your door. And it's still a process in the sense that you have to align with their technology partners, you have to go through a card issuance process, you have to provide them due diligence, which you probably have handy because you just got a bank license, and a lot of KYC, AML information that's card specific, right? Policies related to card issuance and the like. And then in most cases, especially in the United States, you need actual approval from your regulator to the extent you didn't get it during the initial process. So it's it's relatively straightforward. It can be time consuming, but as a bank, it tends to go through very seamlessly. Now, the question I get more often than not is, I'm not a bank, but I wanna issue like prepaid, uh, secured credit card, anything like that. And that is a little more complicated because to become a card issuer, what they call a principal, you have to be a bank. So for you to like white label, let's say a prepaid debit card, you have to approach a bank and each bank is going to have different requirements, but the most common would be like two years audited financials, a business plan, a wealth of KYC, AML information, and of course money. What that money is, it's deal dependent, right? Like you could come in there with like no experience, nothing. They may not even give you an offer to white label a card, right? But if they do, the price may be higher. Whereas if you were an established, you know, player in the EU or something, and we're trying to expand to the US, you would probably expect and anticipate that your price would be lower, but there's no like rhyme or reason. And there's no like regulatory hurdles to actually doing that. Like out of an abundance of caution, you'd always want to register as an MSB in like the United States. But outside of that, there's no like state level licensing or anything that you would otherwise need to acquire. And the process, if you're going to white label, because you know, you're dealing with the bank and not the card associations, really varies on the bank, right? And and it's it's it can be very long. Like I've had it go six or more months, but I've had it take two months. So it's really dependent on who you're dealing with and what you want to do. Because certain types of white label card programs, whether it's like secured credit cards, debit cards, they all have different risk profiles that the banks assess. And they charge accordingly to that. And they also will require additional documentation for higher risk programs than for lower risk programs. So the answer you know, to the question, like, how do I become like a card issuer? Well, if you have a bank license, it's, you know, they'll come to you and they'll tell you what to do. But if you want to white label something, there's really no rhyme or reason or structure that like I or anybody could say, it says, this is exactly what you have to do because each bank, provided they do it and most banks don't, right? It's almost like akin to like neobanking, which I've talked about a lot before here. There's no like set, you know, if, if I go into a licensing scenario and it's like the statute says you need a business plan, you need audited financials, you need this, that, it's very easy. But each bank is going to be a little bit different, right, when it comes to like their requirements for like neobanking. The same goes for becoming a card issuer. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, when people often confuse it, is being an acquirer, which doesn't require um, the the involvement of a bank per se, in the sense that like you need to partner with them, but an acquirer, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. Acquirer is just somebody who's acting as the intermediary between a merchant and an issuing bank, right? So you're just like the, in parlance, you're the credit card processor, debit card processor. So, you know, people will come and say, well, you know, I apply to be an acquirer. Well, that doesn't really help you if you want to issue a debit card because that doesn't allow you to issue a debit card program, right? So it's it's very undefined, but it's also very much just like relationship driven and like knowing what banks 
will allow these white label, white label programs and then engaging them and finding out what they need. Right. And that's, that's really what it is. And like the timing is all kind of deal dependent on the scope and the inherent risk that, uh, you pose or, you know, potentially pose to the issuer bank because of their own relationship with Visa MasterCard and the risks inherent with that. So that's kind of the trick. If you have questions or need introductions to banks that do the white label programs, definitely hit me up, Adam at Adam Tracy, T-R-A-C-Y dot I-O, and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.